Hey everybody, it's me, Marcus from Things, and today we're gonna take a first look at the prototype of the Diana Instant Square from Lomography. Okay, Lomography was nice enough to lend me the prototype of the Diana Instant Square, a, a camera that's currently on Kickstarter available for $69. I had this camera for like 48 hours now, or like, and I was busy doing other stuff like live streaming yesterday, uh, taking apart other cameras. I was really tempted to get my fingers on this baby and just take it apart, but I was strong enough, I didn't cut it in half. Um, at Lomo, you get your camera back. This time with all pieces, I didn't lose something. Um, I lost something with the last camera they gave me. Uh, like, oh, the first camera they gave me actually. And yep, yeah, nothing's missing here so far, so I hope you get all the parts back. That's the Diana. The Diana Instant Square is actually just a modification of the Diana F from Lomography that shoots RAW film, 120. Bro film is the same format as Instax Square. It's 6 by 6 centimeters. I mean, Instax, Instax Square is 62 by 62 millimeters, so a little bit bigger. That camera works as anticipated. Um, it works like the, the film camera. It's nothing super fancy like a Leica camera. It's uh, not the, like super digital camera or anything. It's a, a, a camera like a box camera. It has not the biggest features. It's super basic, but this basic concept kind of works, but you will also have a lot of try and error. Exposure of that camera works, so the exposure is set by this wheel here now. So you have the different openings, one opening, that and so. Actually the Fuji Instax 8, my Mini 8, doesn't do anything different. As you can see there in the back, that's actually an Instax that we took apart and I, maybe I overlay an image of how an Instax looks inside but this video is about the Diana. So I was outside testing it, uh, I took a few pictures here. Sometimes I was frustrated, sometimes I was really happy with the results, but overall it turned out pretty good, let's say it like this. I wasn't expecting anything super spectacular of the camera, I was expecting what it does. Uh, unfortunately the flash didn't work, because the, the adapter was missing when I got it, um, everything was on a kind of tight schedule, and since that's the only one. I tested out all the lenses, so they gave me uh, the, the lens set. I don't know if that's like, that's not in the basic set, but in the bigger one, you have uh, a lot of lenses. So you have a um, 38 millimeter super wide, you have a fish eye, you have a telephoto, and you have a 55 millimeter. So you have the different lenses that you can use for this camera. They just all screw on the camera like this. Uh, I don't know if that mechanism stays, but I think it's the same as the Diana. So it should be interchangeable. The mechanism is pretty easy. The patches are set down here at the moment. That's the shutter, and here is the trigger for bulb or for shutter time. A basic camera. So just to tell you one sentence, Lomo puts in their Kickstarter project to kind of that, that kind of describes that camera <laughs> as good as it it gets, I, I think. So let me read it to you. Shake off expectations and let the Diana Instant Square fill your frame with unpredictable beauty. Yes, unpredictable is where you, it gets you. <laughs> You could measure the light, you could set that right, um, it, it starts at f16, uh, which is kind of okay with the, the um, ISO 800 Instax film. So that, that's one thing that's good, that the film is, has such a high ISO. That's also why like setting the um, focusing distance doesn't matter too much for the lenses, since you're already on f16, which is super wide, even on medium form format. So that the depth of field is amazingly big already on the most open aperture this camera has. This camera is for fun in my opinion and it, it makes fun to shoot with it. It's just a quick shooting around but you also tend to forget that the film is kind of pricey. Yeah, it makes fun to shoot with it and try out and like mark exposure so the, it, at the moment the market exposure feature is just like the slider here. I'm pretty sure it would change. Uh, I, I think they will implement some stuff from the from their instant square, so from this one. The LEDs, I think they will implement something like that, that shows you how many frames are left. Probably the switches may, will all be something in the back maybe, I don't know. Um, they still have to figure that out, because we have a lot of space here in the back, so they could put it here. Yeah, so the film is loaded in the back, and the front part is at the moment connected. So when it, the camera is turned on, it immediately ejects an image as soon as you press the shutter if you're not a multi-exposure. Multi-exposure locks that mechanism and you can shoot multiple times. But what I'm really <laughs> looking forward to is like, that camera is 70 bucks. 70 bucks is kind of okay from pricing. First thing I will do with this camera is cut that front piece off, build a button somewhere else. 
that ejects the, uh, the starts the ejection mechanism and put in one of these. So yeah, that's a large format lens, 150 millimeter, and you can set exposure time and aperture in that lens, and it's like it's it's really good glass, and it takes amazing pictures. Having that lens in that camera would make it such a good thing. Uh, I can't couldn't wait for that. So I will fund that project just to get get that body. Yeah, maybe if you also cut that off, you could maybe put a RB67 or something in there. But yeah, otherwise the price is pretty okay with 69 euro, like dollar, US dollar, yeah, 69 US dollar. Pretty okay price for that camera, uh, just to have an, a camera that just shoots. And the square format is my favorite format, so I would like go for that one for sure. Otherwise, well, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm happy to try to talk with you about them. Oh yeah, the viewfinder. <laughs> At the moment, since that's prototype, the viewfinder is really cool because it's just a silver plate here. Actually, they can't build a viewfinder on top here because the viewfinder, uh, the, the film is getting thrown out here. So the viewfinders go like this. You have this one on here and that one goes on top here and then you can use it like this. So that's the viewfinders for the camera. Yeah, for every lens you have a different viewfinder, so you kind of get a lot of equipment with you that you have to carry around. For me, it turned out that I mostly used the 38mm super wide lens. Let's show you some pictures that we see. So the fisheye is extreme, so that's one thing that bothers me on the fisheye is it doesn't cover all the frame, so that's kind of bad, but it's really fisheye, so it would be something cool. Yeah, exposure is sometimes hard to get right, but uh, it's super sharp, so the lenses are sharp. That's, that's something really good. The images, if you get them right, they are really sharp. I like this fisheye, it was like an experiment and I didn't know how like wide it is, so I'm in that frame and I like the buildings left and right. Yeah, that's also the telephoto lens, that's also not covering the full frame unfortunately, maybe they changed something with that. So always keep in mind that camera is a prototype, that's the first prototype, they're still funding on Kickstarter, so I'm sure there will be a lot of changes. In that video you see the final design, that's like the prototype is the function, the design is in the video. Some chemistry mistakes, they're still working on the rollers I guess in that camera, because um, I always have like on the left corner as you can see there's a lot of missing uh, like on every frame there's a little bit of chemistry missing it's not bad but it is there kind of crazy double exposures a lot of things that you can do with that camera I also would love like they, they have filters for that camera that you can put in front of the of the camera I don't know how to manage to do that with the lenses dif like on different sides in front what would be great would be like a filter that you can like insert from the top like the aperture filters could some have something that you put in between the camera so like just take the camera and put it in between here in the middle of the lenses a filter that would be cool because you just need small filters and you can have a lot stored with you and just put them in a bag like a little bag change the filters that's nice otherwise camera was pretty fun to use sometimes frustrates me because I didn't know why it's so bright or anything and sometimes more fun here are the images with the different focal lengths so we go from telephoto normal 38 I think that's 38 then there's fish eye. These are different focal lengths that Lomo offers. First look at the Diana F, 69 bucks, I'm gonna fund one. And they have different sets, like the, with all the lenses it's a little bit more expensive, but the cheapest one is 69. And since I'm gonna cut the lens off, I'm gonna go with the cheapest. I would love to take that camera apart already, <laughs> but I unfortunately have to give it back tomorrow. Okay, hope you liked that video. It did, thumbs up, didn't, thumbs down. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. I don't know if I can answer all of them. I can answer a few of them, probably. If you want to see more content, subscribe. And so I did a live stream on Saturday night. It was pretty fun. There was only 20 people, which is okay. Uh, it was fun, like, so uh, I'm gonna try to do regular live streams where you can just drop in, ask questions. I'll also be in Discord um, and hang out there in voice chat so you can just come in and chat with me. It was fun. I was disassembling the, the Instax Mini 8 and I really had fun doing that. Um, I kind of look forward to find some broken cameras. So if you have broken cameras and you don't need them, it would be cool if you send them to me. Like don't send tons of broken cameras, but like if you have something special that's like interesting to take apart, you can send it to me and we can do a live stream taking it apart and looking at the different parts, what's in there, the technique of the patcher for example, stuff like that. So I still have like two or three cameras here that are broken that we can do do that on and then we are gonna see where I get broken cameras for. So yeah, that was fun and I'm sure I'm gonna do a lot of teardowns, maybe also some assembling back, but this one will be, since I love it, how it looks, 
Um, I'm gonna glue that all on a, on a backdrop and frame it and put it on the wall. I think that will be amazing, like different cameras all over. I also want an SX70, so I have to get a really broken SX70 to take apart. I think that's it, that's it. See you next week, bye.